Welcome, friends, to worship here at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in Cherry Hill. My name is Pastor Josh. We wanted to take a minute to welcome you to our online worship service. And we just want to let you know a little bit about what you can expect as you're in worship with us online here. We're going to spend some time hearing some great music from McKenna and from Ellen. We're going to spend some time in participation through our call to worship and our prayer time. We're going to be hearing a great children's chat from Pastor Andrew, our family ministries pastor. And we're going to take some time. We're going to hear the scripture of the Ten Commandments. We're going to reflect on that as we're continuing on in our summer series, the Summer of Glass, as we reflect on the beautiful stained glass windows that are here in our sanctuary. Well, friends, again, we are so excited you've decided to join us for worship. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship. Please join with me for our call to worship. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join with me for our opening prayer. Come, my light, and illumine my darkness. Come, my life. And revive me from death. Come, my physician, and heal my wounds. Come, flame up divine love, and burn up the thorns of my sins, kindling my heart with the flame of thy love. Come, my king, sit upon the throne of my heart, and reign there. For thou alone art my king and my lord. Amen. And now we will cite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey kids, do we have rules at home? Do you like those rules? I know I had rules when I was growing up. And one I particularly did not like, but I had to follow, was how long I could watch TV every night. That rule was there for a reason. Why do you think your parents give you rules? helps us become better people. Do we have rules that we have to follow in church? Yes, we do. Um, there are 10 in particular that I'm talking about. Do we know what those are? Correct. Those are the 10 commandments that God gave to Moses. And they are as follows. Do not worship any other gods. Don't make anything more important in life than God. Do not use God's name in a bad way. Rest one day a week. Obey your parents. Do not kill. Be faithful to your family. Do not steal. Do not lie. And do not be greedy. I know some of these rules are hard to follow, and we may not follow them exactly every day. But that's okay, because God still loves us anyway. But we, it is important to remember these rules and that we are to follow them. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us the Ten Commandments. Thank you for helping us be better people. Thank you for loving us and for your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, we have a couple of uh, announcements this week. Uh, the first is... Uh, that we have Vacation Bible School coming up, and Vacation Bible School will run from June 24th to June 28th, 
and it will be from 6 to 8 p.m. We are looking for volunteers. So if you have uh, kids or grandkids that you want to sign up for it, feel free to go to the church website and on there you can register them. If you are interested in helping with Vacation Bible School, please either email the office or email Pastor Andrew, and that way we can get you uh, signed up to help. We need help in many different areas. So whatever gifts or abilities you have, we will be glad to be able to use those. We wanted to let you know that uh, the United Methodist Men, we have two different events that are coming up. The one is for uh, just the men, and that is the breakfast, which is on the third Saturday of the month. Um, and so we are looking forward to being able to do that. We meet at uh, Amy's Omelette House here in Cherry Hill at 8 a.m. All men are welcome to attend that breakfast. We've been growing, and it's been uh, a good group that we've gotten together. And so we're looking forward uh, to hopefully having to add some more tables again. That would be a good thing. The second uh, event is for everyone. And everyone is invited to the United Methodist Men's uh, Night Out at the Trenton Thunder. And that will take place, um, the information is on uh, the website. I don't have the information here in front of me, but the cost is $12. I think it's actually the third Saturday of uh, this month. So uh, feel free to contact the office. Uh, we will meet at the church at 4 p.m., and we will carpool to the Trenton Thunder. So uh, it will be a good time. Uh, Sunday school, we will continue through the summer. We are looking for volunteers to teach Sunday school for one week. Uh, we're hoping a number of people can step up to be able to teach just one week as we give our regular Sunday school teachers a much-deserved break. The last announcement I have uh, is a uh, unfortunate uh, announcement. Um, I knew that we I know that we spent time introducing uh, Katerina uh, as the new family ministry pastor, but. Uh, her and I talked uh, last uh, Sunday, and uh, we decided that it probably was best um, for her to, to not uh, take the position. And so uh, while we uh, are sad for uh, that, for us, uh, we are praying blessings on her and Zoe uh, as they uh, navigate what the future will hold uh, for the two of them. So uh, please be in prayer for uh Katerina and for Zoe, and uh, we will pray many blessings upon them, and SPRC will uh, resume the search again shortly. Well, friends, those are our announcements uh, this week. We will look forward to continuing in worship with you. Our scripture passage this week comes from the Old Testament, from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 through 17, the Ten Commandments. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generations who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Ten Commandments. Now, there's been movies made about this. Netflix even recently released a series about Moses. But the Ten Commandments, while they were given so many years ago, there has to be some form of practicality for us today. Well, again, our sermon series that we're doing, The Summer of Glass, is reflective of the beautiful stained glass windows that we have along uh, basically the right side of our sanctuary. And so uh, each of these images has been given on behalf of someone in honor or memory of someone. And so uh, the Ten Commandment stained glass, that was given uh, by Vivian and Woody French in uh, memory of William and Adelaide French and William and May Boyle. And so the Frenches gave uh, these these windows, um, and they are absolutely beautiful. And so it, the series has kind of sparked this idea of remembering people who have been saints here at St. Andrews, uh, people who have helped raise others in the faith, individuals that have poured a lot of time and energy into that uh, this church and making it what it is. And so it's important that we take time and we remember who these individuals are. But getting back to the Ten Commandments, there's uh, an individual uh, named Barry Schwartz, and he did a TED Talk uh, a couple of years ago called The Paradox of Choice. And really what this uh, idea is, is that choices... Well, choices really limit us, but that there's really more freedom found when we have boundaries. When I've talked about the Ten Commandments before, I've talked about the idea of children do better when they have boundaries as opposed to freedom. That the boundaries, they create this sense of freedom. There's more of an experience of being able to have comfort in knowing what you can and can't do. And that's really the idea behind the Ten Commandments. And what Barry Schwartz talks about is he uses the example of uh, salad dressing. Uh, That fact that we have a bazillion different types of salad dressing. Just look uh, in the grocery store. That if you need ranch, you're given an outline, there's like seven different kinds of ranch just from one specific brand. He also talks about a a fish in a fishbowl. When the fish begins to understand the size that they are swimming in, they become more free inside of that bowl. Well, friends, again, it's the same here for our Ten Commandments. So I just want to take a minute and kind of talk a little bit about the Ten Commandments in a general sense. And then I'm going to talk about how we can use the Ten Commandments in a practical way. So first, we need to understand that the structure of the Ten Commandments, it breaks down into two recognizable sections. The first is love God. The second is loving others. But there is a swing verse or a a swing commandment in number five. So one through four, worshiping God or loving God. Um, Verses six through ten, are the love of others, but then there's commandment number five. And commandment number five is to honor your parents. Now, this links these two different brackets of commandments, or as we'll talk about in a little bit, words, because those who give us life relates closely to reverence for the ultimate source of life, God. See, case law back in Bible times, we still have case law today, right? Um, Case law back in Bible time, it presented uh, what penalties would have to be assigned to a wide range of offenses rather than indicating certain behavior to be right or wrong and telling people what they should do or what they shouldn't do. But the type of law that we have here in the Ten Commandments that prohibits or requires certain types of behaviors or certain types of uh, personality traits, it's called apodictic law. And it's rarely found in the legal collections of the ancient Near East. This set of laws that God gives to Moses to give to the people, it's unique. It's special for God's chosen people. 
it's special for us as people who are Christians, who adopt both the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's not the standard laws that were presented many, many years ago. See, even the literally the uh, literary formation of these Ten Commandments, it's quite similar to the formulations of international treaties in the ancient Near East. It's in these stipulations of the, the treaties, one, of, one often finds certain behavior either required or prohibited. In this sense, it could be understood that this form, the epidemic term, form of the Ten Commandments, puts them in more of a category of a covenant rather than the category of law. So really, it's the ten words or the ten covenant principles of following God. See, the personal name of Yahweh, which we translate as Lord, is first given to Moses in Exodus chapter 3, the burning bush, as proof that Moses is indeed sent by God. The statement emphasizes that Yahweh is not to be confused with any other God and that what follows was to be received by God's word alone. The Ten Commandments in their present form in Exodus 20 reveal signs of later development and expansion from an earlier form. It's likely that the original form was very brief, that the original form of these Ten Commandments, these Ten Covenantal Principles, were actually ten words. In fact, the literal translation often is the ten words of God. In this way, the commandments become summary of what the people's obligation was towards loving God and towards loving man. And it formulates the covenant that was made on Mount Sinai. One last feature of the Ten Commandments is that they are all given in the second person, singular. You shall not. And yet, in their present position... They are presented as God dem- God's demands that are spoken to all of the people. This gives them greater personal impact, even though each individual is simply one member of a community. So what can we learn from the Ten Commandments, the Ten Covenantal Principles, the Ten Words? The first is, they are designed to be a compass. Now, what do I mean by they are designed to be a compass? What I mean is, think about an individual in your life, an individual that you trust greatly, an individual that in any circumstances that you find yourselves, you know that you can call and that you can have a conversation with and they will get you back on that right track. For me, it's my dad. My dad is my compass. Being a pastor is a challenging job. It is a job of great highs. You get to be there with the birth of children. You get to baptize children. You get to bring people to God. I mean, it is an incredible, incredible high. There's also a lot of lows. You spend a lot of time with dying people. You spend a lot of time in challenging situations. And really, the only people that understand what a pastor's occupation entails is a pastor's spouse or someone who has been a pastor. And so I'm so thankful that my dad has done the pastoring thing for four decades. My dad is a compass in my life, both how he lives, what he says, but also through occupation. The same is true with Ten Commandments. They're meant to guide us. They're meant to be things that help keep us on the right track. They're designed to help us be things well, that show others what God's love looks like, what the light of Christ looks like. The second thing is that the Ten Commandments are really a summary of what Jesus says is the greatest commandment of all. Jesus is preaching in the New Testament. He's asked as that the religious leaders try to trap him, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment of all? And they think they have them because surely there can't be one that is greater than all the others. 
And Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all of your being. It's the easiest way to summarize it. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. That's really what the Ten Commandments are. They are a guide on how to live out what Jesus is teaching. To be a people that love God with all of our being. And to love our neighbors as ourselves. The third is a simple word, fullness. The commandments aren't there to make us feel guilty. They're there to help us find a fullness and a meaningful life that God loves us, that we love God, and that we love our neighbor. Try looking at the commandment through adult eyes, but not with adult eyes that see restrictions. Try to think about them in terms of how you can be more intentional in your love of God and in your love of man, of neighbor. The last thing is principles. The Ten Commandments help us as Christians establish what our principles are. See, through following these commandments, through these ten words, these ten covenantal principles, it helps instill in us what we should value in others and what we should value in ourselves. Love God, love man. As I wrap up, people want to understand why the Ten Commandments still matter today. And I'll explain it to you in the sense of reading a book. Now, I'm in the process of reading through uh, Sherlock Holmes again. Sherlock Holmes is one of my favorite things to read. I absolutely love the way Sir Arthur Conan Doyle paints who Sherlock Holmes is, and he's become this character that was created that is famous, probably even more so more famous than the person who created Sherlock Holmes. But in a Sherlock Holmes book, well, you, you have to read it carefully because otherwise you're going to miss what Sherlock Holmes picks up. So if you remove a chapter or a couple of pages, you may understand the outcome, but you won't understand how you got there. Think about it with other books. If you take out a book of the Bible, if you take out a book of a book that you're, or a chapter that you're currently reading of a book, again, you may see the final result, but that doesn't necessarily mean you understand how you got to the final result. Friends, the same is true with the Ten Commandments. It matters because of context. It matters because it gives us the why of what we're doing. It matters because while the end result may be the same, it matters how we get there. Friends, it matters how we love God. And it matters how we love our neighbor. The Ten Commandments, they're like a complete book. They provide context. They provide clarity. They provide guidance in our daily walk. They are like a compass. So friends, as we go this week, rather than us fighting these 10 words or these 10 covenantal principles, may we go and may we embrace them this week, using them as a compass to direct our lives. Amen. Friends, at this time, we're going to do our offering portion of our service. If you would like to give a gift, it would be appreciated. That information is on the screen for you now. Let us bow our heads and our hearts as we take time to bless the gifts that come in today and throughout the week. God, we give these gifts with thankful hearts. We give these gifts acknowledging that you first gave to us, so we now give back to you. God, we pray that as we go about our lives, that our lives will be utilizing the Ten Commandments as guidelines, as a compass for direction in life. God, we thank you for all that you have given us, for you indeed are a generous God. May we be generous with the love and grace that we share with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Final thoughts. Well, friends, none of us like rules, do we? In fact, we feel that they cramp our style. We feel that they restrict us in what we can do. But the reality is, is that the Ten Commandments, they're not just rules. They're guidelines. They're a compass for what we're called to do, to be a people that love God and that love man. Friends, may we go not viewing this week as the Ten Commandments as a rule book for us to follow, but as guiding principles that will draw us closer to God and our neighbor, but also draw others into God and a loving neighbor. Amen.